Hey, my name is Jason. I'm a registered polysomnographic technologist as well as a registered sleep technologist, which just means <clears throat> I run sleep studies and I score sleep studies and I know about sleep studies. So you probably have questions about if you just had a sleep study, uh, how do you interpret your report? There's kind of a lot of information in there that's a little foreign. So um, on my website, freesleepappadvice.com, um, I have some uh, reports up there that you can kind of go over and I explain some of the um, some of the terms. You can also go into my forum, freesleepappadvice.com forward slash forum. You can ask very specific questions, but you know some of the main ones are what are the terms mean like um, sleep onset. Um, so when you initially fall asleep at night, well, I'm sorry, they say good night. And then at that point we tag lights off. And then it, the time from there until the time you fall asleep in minutes is your sleep onset. I'm sorry, is your sleep latency. That's how long you took from there to there. That gives the doctor information. And then after you fall asleep, the clock starts again and then we're looking for REM latency. And that is the time once asleep that it took you to enter REM. And typically, you'll enter REM for the first time after 60 minutes to 90 minutes of sleep. Although in the sleep lab, um, sometimes you'll you'll skip that first REM period, which is really kind of a lame REM period anyway because it's pretty short. Towards the end of the night, now you start getting some big REM periods that are pretty long. Um, what else is there? You have. Um, uh, sleep efficiency, and that, I mean, that's pretty much a fancy word for saying how much sleep are you getting for the time that you're in bed. <clears throat> so if you're in bed for eight hours, like they say, lights off, like good night, and then they come in, hello, good morning, and that time is usually eight hours. Um, your sleep efficiency, if you slept for six of the hours, or you, know, you slept for four of the hours, and you're awake for the other four, then your sleep efficiency is going to be 50%. Um, that's pretty much all it means. Um, that's another way of looking at uh, WASO. WASO stands for wake after sleep onset. So once you fell asleep, how much of that time, how much wake was there? Um, they'll have things like um, time in bed, which is TIB. Um, uh, gosh, I can't even think of stuff. One of the things people see in the report for a diagnosis, everyone knows you, know, you were diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea. Bam, that's pretty clear for most folks. Um, some people you'll see something like um, idiopathic hypersomnia. What that means, <laughs> if you really break it down into the Latin roots, which you probably don't speak Latin, um, idiopathic, idio, like idiot, like you don't know path, like within a like a pathologist, the root cause of something, and then hypersomnia is super tired, <laughs> so you don't know the reason for them being super tired. Um, it's just a diagnosis to give when someone's very tired, and yet their apnea hypopnea index or the respiratory disturbance index is really low and not in the diagnosable range. So you have to say something. And, you know, you have to ask your doctor how those are, are treated. It's typically like stimulants and stuff from what I understand, but talk to your doctor. Um, so I hope, hope that helps. Um, like, if, like I said, if you have any questions specifically, uh, like go to freesleepadvice.com. You can find sample reports <coughs> and then add forward slash form if you want to talk to someone and we'll be able to help you out. That's it. Uh, and if you want to know what like apnea, or I'm sorry, AHI and RDI, there's a little more in depth, and I have separate videos for those, so you can just search my YouTube channel for that. Um, it's the lanky lefty 27, and that's it. Thanks.